everyone and welcome to Great Ones, Alekhine, the second video. And, well, I think we will dedicate this entire video for his match against Capablanca, one of the most famous matches in chess history. We touched a little bit how they got to the match, right? Capablanca, <laughs> Alekhine, sorry, was uh, pretty much establishing himself as the second best player in the world in the 20s. Uh, there was few other uh, potential challengers, especially Nimzovic, but he couldn't raise the funds. If you remember the uh, London uh, base for World Championship, basically something that was hunting Capablanca after it, that he couldn't get a rematch. But finally, a match happened in Buenos Aires. A group of people, uh, you know, b Argentinian businessmen, decided to host this, uh, you know, the great South American Capablanca. And actually, it's amazing. It was Capablanca's only defensive type match. I mean, that's, I think, you know, out of uh, pretty amazing that, you know, for six years, no matches. So, we've seen in the last video for Capablanca, it was the third part, how many opportunities Capablanca dropped in this uh, match from game 17 when he was much better, the absolute tragedy in game 27, uh, you know, like just uh, King F2 instead of King E2 and being win and winning for so many moves. I mean, uh, really, many, many uh, missed opportunities. Alekhine, on the other hand, really took whatever he could in this match. I mean, objectively, I, I, I think that Capablanca shouldn't have lost this match, but, well, I'm biased. Let's, uh, let's see the critical, few of the critical games. Well, Alekhine win in game 11 will be our main game, and then, well, a little bit from other important games. It was the first to score six wins, it was a long match, only the 84-85 Kasparov-Karpov match, or Karpov-Kasparov. Karpov was world champion then, was a longer match by games. Okay, Queen's Gambit declined. We mentioned pretty much all the games in the match. Well, that way, Cambridge Springs. Okay, let's go quickly about theory stuff. All right. So, making it short, White has... A quite logical structure. He gave away his dark color bishop, putting the pawns on dark squares. Clear a space advantage for white. On the other hand, black has those two dudes, right? The pair of bishops. And we know that's important. Pair of bishops win games on move 50, 60. So black is going to play slow, slow, and then try to open the position. Well, white will try to get, you know, more space and squeeze black, create some weaknesses. Okay, b6, obviously weakening c6, on the other hand, threatening c5 in some situations. This is very, very common, pulling the bishop back, so the rooks are both on the files. I mean, okay, this has been played by some decent, uh, absolutely decent uh, players. You know, we have Yusupov with black, several other strong grandmasters, so... Nothing spectacular. It's a very long game, so let's see what we can. Okay, really white is dancing around, and this move e4, okay, it's a move that really says, well, white wants something. If white doesn't want anything, okay, you can just stick the knight on e4. Uh, visually, it looks beautiful. Again, uh, the dominance of the entire dark squares complex in this position is absolute, you know, just very difficult to see any break from black here. On the other hand, how white is going to win. So, white is trying to get some space. I said, personally, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of e4. I mean, it's okay move, of course, but d6 